So today I'm going to show you how we can go about replacing the rocker switch, that's this guy, in a power bar, that's this guy. Now, I mean, you might say, well, come on, power bars, they're not all that expensive these days, just go get yourself a new power bar. This one is quite a nice power bar, it's uh, made in Canada, believe it or not, uh, by Hammond Manufacturing, and it's got a solid metal case, so this is a solid aluminum there, uh, piece of steel there, and uh, this thing can really, uh, you know, it'll take the full 15 amps. Uh, it's only got four outlets, but that's fine. Um, but it really will take a lot of abuse. Uh, and you can see this one's had a little bit of abuse already. Uh, and in fact, I think the, uh, if you can tell there, part of the socket got broken at one point. Um, but anyways, this power bar can really take a lot of abuse. It also has the 15-amp uh, uh, circuit protection. No no surge protection in this unit. Uh, it's just a, a power tap. But it's, like I say, it's, uh, it's built like a tank. Now, this rocker switch has gotten a little flaky. So first off, you'll notice uh, that it doesn't light up when it's on. The next thing you'll notice, I'll put in this tester here. Okay, so that's a st this is a standard wiring tester, and uh, you can see there was a little bit of a delay there. When um, when the outlet is wired correctly, those two uh, lights, the amber, orange light, and the red light, turn on. Now you can see now there's a little bit of a lag there with the switch. You know, yeah, so. You don't really expect the power bar, and sometimes it, it fails to engage like that, right? That That's not a good thing. Um, you don't want uh, a flaky switch like that in a power bar. So uh, I'm going to show you how I go about, you know, replacing the switch in the power bar. And uh, you might be able to use this video if, uh, if you have uh, some other kind of item with a rocker switch like this to repair. It turns out the switch is... Uh, completely uh, replaceable module. And I'll walk you through the whole process. Um, and uh, fortunately, uh, this power bar comes apart. So just give me a second to get ready with my tools and I'll show you how this goes. Okay, now step one is to open this up and this power bar uh, has uh, some screws. So you can see there's two screws on that end and two screws on that end and those fasten the top frame to the rest of the case and I'm soon going to be kind of uh, putting this on double time in a sen second sense or, or triple time uh, to get through it a little quicker. But uh, one of, there are two steps here to opening this up. One is to take the screws out and the other step is to separate the, um, the front plate from the rest of the case. And uh, it's a little bit of a, a, a tricky endeavor, although once you get started, it goes pretty quick um, because uh, it's a bit of a pressure uh, feed here on the edges, you can see. So anyways, I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna talk as I do this because I'm gonna be uh, accelerating the video. Okay, now all the screws are out. This uh, screw here is actually just used, you'll see in a second, for the uh, grounding circuit, so that screw doesn't need to come out.
Okay. There, it's all out. And there you can see the circuitry on the inside. Now, one of the things I want to say uh, that I maybe should have said before is uh, make sure that you feel comfortable working with uh, AC electronics and make sure, first of all, that this isn't plugged in. Uh, you'll see this power bar, it uh, doesn't use stripped wire internally. Uh, sorry, it uses stripped wire internally, so it doesn't use insulated wire internally. And so you can see the connections here. So let's, let's zoom in a little bit now. Okay, so there's the, the connections on the switch. Okay. And so you can see that the wire, there, there are three connections to the switch. So, um, so one second. So, so this one here, that's the neutral. Okay. And that chains into the neutral on the plugs back here. And then you can see that the, the incoming uh, hotline comes onto the center pin of the switch and it switches it onto the outer pin of the switch and then that flows to the uh, to the sockets and internally these wires are not insulated um, so uh, yeah one of the things I might do one of these days is upgrade the wiring to insulated wire except um, it looks like I might also have to replace the sockets because uh, they've used the quick connect um, push-in style sockets and uh, I can't seem to find any kind of release for these sockets so uh, that, that presents a little bit of a challenge getting the wires out and of course while I wouldn't manage wouldn't mind destroying these wires uh, I really don't fancy having to replace the wires that connect to the switch. So the first thing we have to do in any case is we have to disconnect these wires. Uh, and fortunately for us, everything is, uh, they're using terminals, um, push on terminals. So, um, so everything should come apart pretty easily. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I don't want to just yank on them really hard because yanking on them really hard might put two, might uh, bend something and uh, <clears throat> cause it to break, and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ease these off a little bit, and I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver to just... I need something with a little bit more of a sharp point there. I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver to get in there. Okay, and uh, let's see, I've opened up a little bit of a gap. This one will work now. Okay, so I've eased that up. And uh, I'm going to do something similar on the other side here. Oops. You can see that. Okay, I've eased that up a little bit. And... Uh, it might be a little tricky to see. I'm going to do a similar thing for the, uh, for the black wire in there. Okay, it's coming up pretty easily. And so I'm going to, I'm going to pull off that because that's a stranded wire and that's going to flex. Okay, so now before I pull these up, like I said, I don't want to put too much tension on these wires. Now the socket, the, the rocker switch, um, is a, it's a push-in kind of thing. Um, and so fortunately what I can do, if you press, you can see there are these pins on either side, they're plastic. So if I push these down, you have to, there's two, so you have to kind of push them both. You can see that that starts to slide out and you have to kind of do both sides Otherwise, it has a tendency to kind of get stuck, which 
Okay, done one side. I don't want that to go back in. There we go. So I've got both sides and it's coming along. And I just want to ease up on these terminals as I'm pulling the switch out. There, see that one's come up. And, uh, oops, the switch should fill the slip back in there, which is what it tends these things tend to do. There we go. And just ease that apart, and now it's out. And so there's the rocker switch, okay all out and there's a an access point there and I now need to get a replacement rocker switch it just so happens I uh, have taken a trip to the uh, hardware store and I've got a replacement switch now I'm not promoting any brands here um, but anyhow this one was not too expensive and uh, one of the things that you have to pay attention to is there's a bit of a wiring diagram on the back. You have to make sure that you get the right pin here for the, uh, for the neutral versus the load, right? Because the neutral has to go onto the, to the white line. And so now they've labeled on the here, they've told us that neutral is pin 3, which is very nice of them, but where do they number the pins? Here they do, hopefully, yeah, you can see that. So we see 1, 2, 3, so this one's the neutral, which makes sense, and so this is going to go in like that, and they've also colored it a bit of a, a brass color. So now we can take that, and once again, this is also a push-in, so... This is just gonna come in, just like that. And we wanna slide those terminals back on. Okay, and it's uh, fantastic how it almost slid right back in on its own. Okay, so Everything you should be able to see, everything there is connected once again. All the wiring is good, nothing is touching anything that it shouldn't be touching. Okay, and if we look at it from the front, looks like it was made for it. Whoops, looks like it was made for it, and that goes back and forth quite nicely. Now, uh, because of the way this is designed, I don't, I'm not going to just pop it in right now, but what I'm going to do is uh, zoom out. Okay, so I'm going to take this. I haven't done any change to the wiring of these sockets at all. Okay. I'm going to take this. I'm going to sit it there. Now, getting this out was a pain, but getting it back in is not that difficult. A little bit of pressure puts that side in. And uh, I just need to... pry that open a little bit to get the other side in here. And of course, once that gets started, we just keep there. So now that's done. Now I'm just going to hold off a second. I'm not going to put the screws back in. What I'm going to do, I'm going to plug this in. Oh, you can see that it's lit up already. Okay, now it's always lit up. I thought it would only light up when it's on. I hope I wired it correctly. Okay. Well, we're going to 
check to see how this works. I've disassembled the unit again because we can see that we weren't getting the desired behavior of the switch. The light should be on when the switch is, when the power is flowing and off when it's not flowing. So if I look at the uh, wiring diagram here, let's pay some careful attention here. We got the neutral right, okay, so neutral, so the white line, uh, that's correct. But then the load, the load is supposed to go on the middle line, which is two, and the line should be going on one. And so what that means, if we look at this, that means that we should be wiring this and this in that order, right? So originally these were organized this way so that the line came in on the center, but according to this wiring diagram, the line should come in on the, uh, the one on the edge. And what that means then is that we should get the desired behavior where the switch lights up when it's on and not all the time. Okay, so as we could see before, it would light up properly, but we weren't getting the desired behavior where it would only light up when the power was supplied. So let's insert that again. We'll put this one here on that edge. We need to do a little bit of a... This one can go there, which is fine. And then we'll just do a little bit of a twist there, a little bend, and put that through on the middle. There. And there. Okay. So we've got everything hooked up now again. Okay. But we've switched these two around. It's important to pay attention to those wiring diagrams. Okay. Now I'm not going to put it all together before trying it out. Okay. Let's make sure that the ground wire is stuck in there. Although the whole case is grounded. That's the intent. Now we're going to plug this in. Let's put that in here. Okay. And now we see that the switch is off. No current flowing. Now which is on and current is flowing. So that's the desired behavior, off, on, perfect. So let that be a lesson to you. Always make sure to uh, check the wiring diagram before uh, doing it. And fortunately in this case, uh, it didn't cause any big issues except for leaving the light on all the time. Let's uh, just Reassemble that again. Let's reassemble that again. So we just slide that in along that edge. And let's, you can see what I'm doing here. that in and there we have it although I probably should have uh, disconnected that on off on off perfect okay well thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video you want to see more like it please subscribe to my channel <laughs>
Thank you.